I'd also argue that this is one of Arnie's most compelling performances. Few are gonna claim that he's some great actor, but it does take talent to, you know, rid yourself of visible emotion. And he seems like a pretty charming guy, and I would guess he was back then too. So it must have been a challenge for him to pretend to be pure fucking ice cold. I love the level of detail that James Cameron always brings to his films. I love that the fucking flesh on on his face and the skin dies and you hear flies buzzing and you see it turning white. I love that the limp is retained and, you know, mimicked in every single other installation. You know, in the bunker, I mean, it was already looking pretty fucking rotten. You know, you were thinking, I don't want to be alive in that time, and then it gets fucking hit. This has some really amazing action. I'd say the police station shootout is one of the most chilling action scenes ever. You know, and seeing how the Terminator's mind works, you know, okay, that guy moved behind a wall, then he moves, you know, and shoots him through the wall. The fucking mercilessness of the machine. I think it would have pro I think it would have been interesting to see Lance Henriksen's take on the Terminator. I haven't seen him in a ton of stuff, but I mean, in the Terminator, in Aliens, he does play a fairly, you know, robotic, weird kind of character. And yes, Bishop was an android, but Detective Vukovic wasn't. I also just love the idea of Terminators and Skynet. It makes such good sense, you know, that a completely logic machine would see us as extremely dangerous to each other, to it, and the concept of using machines that look just like people to get behind enemy lines and be trusted and then kill them is really fascinating to me. For anybody else who enjoys that idea, do yourself a huge favor, read, I think it's called The Second Variant, whatever, by Philip K. Dick. In general, Philip K. Dick, hard to go wrong with that guy. Rest in peace, man. And yes, Cameron didn't make it all up without any inspiration. It is true that Harlan Ellison, who in general seems to know what he's doing when he's writing, even if he is really fucking bitter, but to be fair, Gene Roddenberry really fucked him over. Before you get defensive, I'm a Trek fan too, somewhat, what I've seen anyway. I'm just saying, that wasn't right. Anyway, Harlan Ellison's two Twilight Zone episodes, Soldier and the, in my opinion, far superior Demon with a Glass Hand, very clearly inspired the Terminator. And if you ask me, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody gets inspiration from something, and it's not like Cameron just copy-pasted. He did his own thing with it. I absolutely recommend the two episodes as well, if you like the ideas in The Terminator. This is so much more violent than the second one. Again, you're angry, relentless, like the title character. I love how you... I love how it tricks you into thinking, okay, now it's dead, now it's gone, and then it rises again. I love the theme tune. I think the second one completely destroyed it. I know it's less synthesized than the second one, but it just doesn't sound machine-like enough. It's really cool how the Terminator pulls a fucking carry on that cop at the desk before the police station shootout. Also something that really impresses me is that it's low budget, but it still kicks ass, you know, it still completely delivers. I fucking love when that happens. Same goes for, you know, John Carpenter is really great at doing it. George Lucas's original Star Wars, where he really had to fucking fight to get, to keep his vision intact. Instead of compromising, instead of adapting it so that it would be more accessible or whatever the fuck. And the only of the four who's yet to prove that he can write something that isn't pretty superficial and or convoluted, Robert Rodriguez. You know, as long as the guy gets the script from someone else, he can really make it work, you know, just watch Sin City. Good director, good at visuals, less so at the writing thing. I love the realistic handling of the guns that they have to reload, and the amount of bullets in the clips seems fairly realistic, and yet the action is still, you know, over the top, big. One thing I've never quite gotten is why all the skulls, you know, the tank treads, 
roll over a bunch of skulls. I get that it means that a lot of people have died there, but why are all the skulls right next to each other? Like, did Skynet make a machine that shoves the skulls together? Were the people engaged in an orgy and that's why they're so close? I don't know. Also worth noting, in this one, the Terminators are shown to be infiltrators. Okay, since I'm gonna criticize the second one, I guess I should be fair and say some of the negative about this too. It is really, really 80s. I didn't grow up in that decade, but I can recognize it when it's this obvious. You know, the music, the hair, the clothes. And yes, maybe the whole love thing is a bit, I don't know, unconvincing maybe. Maybe Kyle Reese has really more idealized this woman than fall in love with her because he's never met her before. You know, even if John Connor as an adult has told Kyle Reese a million stories about what his mother was like, it is kind of straining credulity that he could fall in love by proxy like that. I also personally think that there is a lot of good humor in the movie and that it manages to not interfere with the darkness. The dialogue between the cops is funny and there are other things here and there that make you smile or chuckle. Like, you must have had a fun childhood, for example. Anyway, that brings us to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I'm going to be talking about the director's cut version, but if you haven't seen it, I'm not spoiling anything because it barely changes anything. Most of the new stuff is pretty good, although I'm not sure we needed to see that much of Miles Bennett Dyson. But overall, it is the same movie. It's not recut, it's just other scenes added in. Now, let's start with the very first fucking shot of the thing. Okay, pan, pan, dark future, reminiscent, makes us think the first one, good, bunch of skulls, not bad, and what the fuck. That would be the foot of a Terminator. A Terminator exoskeleton in battle as if it's a fucking foot soldier. Other than that it's evocative of one of the coolest images from the first one and that people of course wanted to see the skeleton move with more ease and now they have the technology for that. What the fuck sense does this make? For one thing it's hinted at in the first one that they can destroy them. You know Kyle Reese is asked can you destroy that thing and he says I don't know. With these weapons, I don't know. Meaning, in the future, they have weapons that can destroy them. They're infiltrators. They're no good once you know that they're there. Honestly, what the fuck can a foot soldier like that do that the tank tread one and the flying HKs can't? Get into areas only accessible by humans, you say? Well, maybe that would work if it wasn't so fucking obvious. It's not even black. It's silver. You could spot it from far away. I also hate how the future war scenes in this make it seem so, okay, we're gonna win this fight. I mean, they last all of two fucking minutes. And in that time, we see them downing a fucking foot soldier exoskeleton and shooting it and downing an HK plane with an energy gun that doesn't look that much bigger than the one in the first one that already failed. I mean, yes, I get it. I know that in the first one, they won the fucking war, just barely, but it's said. It is not shown because it diminishes the effect. It makes us think that, oh, well, we will win. The first movie made the future war seem like a constant fucking struggle, just to stay alive. And the second one, within the first five minutes, we're assured, like a fucking pat on the head of the audience. Don't worry, we're gonna make it. Doesn't that kind of contradict the entire fucking message of the movie that if we don't stop destroying each other, we're not gonna make it? Stop relaxing? One of the, f one of the things that also just bother me is that this movie should not exist. Or it shouldn't be a Terminator movie, at the very least. It's basically a remake. Yes, if he had called... Yes, if he had called it something else and renamed Skynet and the Terminators and shit, people would say, hey, it's just like that movie you made earlier. 
but at least it wouldn't completely fuck it up.